All right, our statement today is actually pretty fun. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. I'm sure you've heard or seen these terms and papers before, but this question actually highlights why it's important and or certain applications. So in a perfect conductor, the con conductivity is infinite, so E equals zero, and any net charge resides on the surface. Remember that the force is equal to QE. So if E is zero, then the force isn't moving the uh, charges anywhere. Hence, all the any or any net charge resides on the surface. Okay, just as it does for an imperfect conductor in electrostatics. A, show that the magnetic field is constant or dBdt is equal to zero inside a perfect conductor. All right, show that the magnetic flux through a perfectly conducting loop is constant. All righty, and then a superconductor is a perfect conductor with the ad additional property that the constant B field inside is in fact zero. Ooh, that's cool. C, show that the current in a superconductor is confined to the surface. All right, that kind of makes sense. Mimicking the electrostatic case. And then D, superconductivity is lost above a certain critical temperature, Tc, which varies from one material to another. Suppose you had a sphere, radius A, above its critical temperature, and you held it uniform magnetic field, B0, Z hat, uh, while cooling it below Tc. Find the induced surface current, K, as a function of the polar angle, theta. All right. Well, let's go ahead and chug it along. Part A. From the condition of the perfect conductor with Faraday's law, we get that, well, the curl of E is equal to negative B, uh, negative partial of B with respect to T, but the curl of zero is zero, so we see that um, the partial would be with respect to, partial of B with respect to T is zero. Pretty easy on that one, I would say. So this tells us that B is a uh, function of R, a distance, uh, which is independent of T. All right, and for part B, we can use Faraday's law again, but this time in integral form. And what it says is that the closed line integral or the loop of E dot DL is equal to the negative time derivative of the flux. Again, this is magnetic flux. And, but again, if E is zero, then the integral goes to zero. So that's pretty sweet. And what we see is that um, now that we have zero equal to the negative time derivative of phi, we can integrate both sides and show that C is equal to some constant function C. And since in the wire itself, E is equal to zero, so the flux uh, phi through the loop is constant. Okay, pretty easy to deal with there. We've seen that before uh, in differential equations, at least in the first week. Now part C, now we get to have some fun. And the superconductor, what we see is that E equals zero and B equals zero. So from Ampere Maxwell, what we see is J is equal to, well, the curl of B is equal to mu J plus mu naught epsilon naught partial of E with respect to T. But again, if E and B are zero, then both the curl and the time derivative go to zero as well, which leaves you with zero is equal to mu naught J. Well, then therefore J is equal to zero and hence the current must be at the surface. Again, J is equal to the volume current density, not the surface current density. So the volume current density is zero. Thus, in the next part, we can solve for the surface current density. Again, they kind of stay semi-symmetric with the electro case. All right, so part D, we showed that in chapter five that a rotating shell produces a uniform magnetic field inside. Uh, B is equal to two thirds mu sigma omega A uh, Z hat, again, this is a spinning spherical shell. A is the radius of the shell, and sigma is the charge distributed on it, while omega is the angular velocity. Uh, and then we can use this in opposite sign to find the induced field that is to cancel the given field. All right, so basically uh, we know that that's the field when we have a charge there, now we need to find the induced field, hence the negative. All right, so we go ahead and do that. B induced is equal to negative B naught Z hat. Um, which is equal to this uh, given equation. And from there, what we can do is solve for sigma omega a, which again is everything that's happening on the surface. Um, and so what we see here is that that's equal to negative three b naught over two mu naught. The reason why we solve for omega 
uh, sigma omega a or everything happening on the surface is because the surface current is sigma v, but v in spherical sense is equal to omega a. And then sine of theta tells you that this happens at whatever location or whatever ring as you're coming down the polar angle. Hence, what we see here is that once we solve everything in, the surface current density is equal to negative 3b naught over 2 mu naught sine theta phi hat direction. That was fun.